want to look at this uh, world map diagram and what do you notice this line here is the equator and we have our different colors as far as uh, the skin color or tone of human beings so as we move away from the equator you should see something also changing about skin color so near the equator in this area we tend to see the medium to the darker uh, skin color and then further to the north and south don't forget although not a whole lot of land we have um, lighter skin so what do we notice I want you to use this claim evidence uh, reasoning so our claim would be skin color is uh, darker closer to the equator and vice versa so you could also of course state it uh, the further away from the equator, the, the lighter the skin color. And what is your evidence? We'll say our um, chart that we just saw. We see that chart. That's based on scientific observation um, by many different scientists. Um, chart shows a gradual, we'll say lightning. of skin color okay and watch you I'm running out running out of space but gradual lightning of skin color as you move north or south of equator and the reasoning let's see if I can fit it here reasoning is darker skin helps um, prevent the destruction of folic acid so it helps folic acid and this is especially important a lot of times women are pregnant you'll see their pediatrician want to make sure they get especially enough folic acid lighter skin lots of sunlight it's going to break down that folic acid and if a woman is pregnant that fetus will not develop as well conversely um, lighter skin skin um, is important for vitamin D hopefully you can read that it's blocked by my um, by my little box here for my video but vitamin D uh, you need the sun to get vitamin D and if you go north and it's not as sunny if you have darker skin, you're not going to have as much vitamin D. Your bones aren't going to be as strong, and that's going to be a problem. So over time, humans evolved through natural selection to have lighter skin further north and further south from the equator. A couple exceptions I want to mention here is that the native population of uh, northern Canada and Alaska, we would call them Eskimo or Nunavut, is the uh, current um, uh, appellation they like. Uh, they have darker skin. So why is that? They live far north. They still have that darker skin. And the reason is they came over the land bridge with the darker skin. Uh, but at, along the way, they were always eating uh, from the ocean, eating seals. And in their diet, we see today, is very rich in vitamin D. So they did not need to evolve that um, lighter skin. They got plenty of vitamin D from their diet. And there's also, if you go back, um, to the picture I can't hear but you'll see um, there are some populations in Indonesia that live uh, in these cloud forests that um, they're near the equator but they don't receive much light but they have darker skin um, because or have lighter skin that is because they need the light in their skin in order to get enough UV uh, exposure to uh, produce the vitamin D that they need uh, so 
two anomalies, anom anomalies in the north and in the south. We have see darker skin in the north, lighter skin near the equator, but explained through um, you know their local environments and their diet. So pepper moth is a big uh, example that's often used to show this natural selection. And uh, these are over in England. Melanistic means, um, you know, melanin. So that creates browns and uh, almost to the black color we see uh, in some animals. So uh, they sleep on the branches of trees. And during the day, um, they are preyed on by birds. So whatever their camouflage situation really takes... Uh, a big impact on if they survive. So in unpolluted areas, you have this lichen that's covering the branches and it's a light color. So peppered moths that have the black and the white, similar to the lichen, they're well camouflaged. Um, so unpolluted, the regular pepper color works well. Um, what we see in polluted area, we see sulfur dioxide pollution. Basically, creates sulfur, um, sulfuric acid. It kills the the tree, the kills the lichen, so it kills the lichen. And we know soot from burning anything that'll darken the branch. And in polluted areas, we see melanistic melan. We see the melanistic um, versions more because they are camouflaged because they're darker. The other ones, the pepper moss, stand out. They get eaten. So over time, um, in polluted areas, the dark variation become more prevalent because it survived more. The lighter variety was eaten more often, and you don't see them as much because they can't reproduce if they've been eaten. And um, eventually, you know, coal was supplanted by nuclear power, hydropower, natural gas. So less coal was being burned in England. And uh, when air pollution got better, the lichen grew back. And the soot, over time, washed it off. And then the dark varieties, all of a sudden, weren't so good. So they got eaten more, uh, which is so it's crazy. They used to be the light color, then it went to the dark color, then it went back to the light color, all based on the environment. And that's the beauty of evolution, is that you can change to adapt to the conditions. Whatever happens, um, life can sustain itself. Life can... Uh, find a way through variation, through, uh, you know, survival to then be able to um, reproduce and persist. And we also see this in ladybugs as well. And that's the melanistic. So once you label on your paper, melan, these were good in polluted areas. So if you were in a polluted area, check. This is, you want to be looking like this. If you live in a non-polluted area, so this is um, this would be the normal version, at least. And it's funny, normal in this sense is uh, is kind of not real specific, but say without pollution, this is what you want to be. So in the non-polluted areas, you want to look like this. And if we see that on the polluted background, yeah. You're, if you're a bird, boom, easy pick and stands out. This one, not as much. And I don't think I have a picture of uh, uh, on the uh, the regular background. You'll see um, this one blends in as well. So what I want you to do, the pentadactyl limb, very important, very powerful. Choose a color for each of the bones. Color the diagram. Describe uh, how the bones are used and what features make them well adapted to use. So I'm going to try to do this. Let's see if I can do this. So the humerus, say we want the humerus to be red and the radius. Let me see how do I do this. 
on the diagram. Humorant or the radius is orange. We'll go yellow for maybe oh that's not I got it. So yellow. Yeah, this is fun. These always color. Carpels, let's do this light green. And then uh dark green. Now let's go let's go blue. So blue. You do a better job than me for the metacarpals. Let's go purple. For the phalanges. Okay. Now I'm gonna try to remember that. I skipped that one. Okay, I can do it. Okay, so it's kind of hard for me here, but it's not the right. So I think I start with the red, right? So we got a red. Yellow, radius, ulna, carpals. Look how small they are. Um, metacarpals. Phalanges. So in the seal, we see the radius and the ulna are way smaller. Okay? So a lot smaller. Let me do one more. Let me do... Uh, uh, let's see. Let me do the bat. That looks like fun. So, the humerus, the radius, and the ulna, carpals, very small, metacarpals. Check out the phalanges. Okay, so you can finish coloring, but back to my questions. I um, wish I had another page here, but how is each bone used? We can see in the, uh, and write this on yours, in the batch wing, the phalanges for um, the wing, right? So the wing is mostly the phalanges um, really spreading out. And that's we'll say that's what makes it particularly well adapted uh, that extension those you know lengthening those phalanges helps to create the area uh, for the bat swing and then the uh, the bat doesn't need to twist it as much as we do so the carpals the metacarpals are much smaller um, but still to support the wing you have the radius and ulna and a little bit of a humerus okay so go ahead do the same thing for the rest of them